I use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is one of my favorite platforms when it comes to business. And people know me, I probably post at least once or twice a week. And being present online, it's, about, it's a bit like putting a seed in someone's mind. Yeah. When they think about branding, they come to me. That's why I do this, yes? I'm very intentional and I really know exactly what message I want to put out there. So when we were crowd, crowdfunding and getting some support, we had a lot of allies and brands who were supporting us and getting the word out there. And uh, obviously, you know, you don't know who is connected to who. That's the beauty of it. And you were, were connected to, to Alina. Yes. Yes. And yeah. then I put this out. Oh my gosh, I want to get involved. And it was you. Yeah. You, you straight away jumped into it and said, I want to get involved. I want to know how I want to support. We had a chat and straight away, you know, our stories had so much alignment in terms of coming from another country, starting at something, doing something else. So tell us who you are, Fungai. Okay. I'm Fungai Indemra. I am an entrepreneur, a nurse by profession, originally born in Zimbabwe. I've been here 20 years. And I also came with my one bag with two dresses and I was just coming to work. But I'm so happy that I didn't make a choice to settle for less. I am a girl who believes that you can have it all. You can have what you want. The only thing is you must be willing mm. to do what it takes to get there. So from being a nurse from Zimbabwe, I now run an empire and I'm now a woman in tech. And I run my own tech company, developing solutions in healthcare mm -hmm. and in banking. Yes. Do you yes. know it's interesting what you say that you, know, you, don't, you can start your journey in one direction and go to another direction. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of learnings. What has been some of the lessons from you know, being a nurse to become an entrepreneur? What, what are the things that you've learned along the way? I think the key things that I've learned is that don't limit yourself and put yourself in a box. Mm. It doesn't matter where you're starting from. What matters is what dream do you have and what difference do you want to make? And basically, as long as you know those things, the next thing that you need to do is to be doing while everybody else is going partying, guys. If you want to make it, you have to put in the work. Yeah. There is no miracle. There is no shortcut. And the amazing thing is that you are going to fail. You are going to fail hard and you are going to fall so bad mm. that you wish you had not got yourself into this thing, okay? But it is those lessons that you learn, those wounds as they heal, you must be prepared to pick up the lessons. And it is those lessons because those lessons, you never get them from no university. No. There is no school fees that pays for those lessons. Entrepreneurship is so amazing because the lessons are in the doing. Mm, absolutely. So, and, I, yes. and I stopped <laughs> counting my failures because <laughs> I realized, okay, I've done it, I've tried it. And my thing has always been, okay, what am I supposed to learn in this situation so I can avoid making that yes. same mistakes straight away? It's like yeah. either you win or either you learn. So, and failures are something that's always been told that you should avoid, but actually yeah. it's part of that journey. So we always go up and down. Yeah. Being in a book is something pretty amazing. And you are a mother as well. What does it mean to you to be in this book? And why is it important? You know, I think that being in this book, that's why I jumped onto the opportunity. I'm telling you that's why I jumped because I sit in rooms where I am the only black woman and not only the only black woman, the only woman. All the time in these boardrooms, we have got spaces waiting to be occupied by people of our color. Mm. Representation matters. So when you spoke to me about the book and when I saw the opportunity, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to make sure my company sponsors this project because I want to plant a seed so that our children, they can have people at high level representing them and not only in high at high level but in tech yes. we are missing in the picture technology is all about transforming the world into the digital space and creating solutions basically what we do every day how can we make that into digital solutions into the phones into the apps into what we do every day and basically that's what we are doing but what's happening is the, the narratives that we are getting to jump on to other people are creating them. Yeah. So they are not narrating our stories. So it's important that our children learn, see us being the people doing. Mm. Somebody has got to lead. 
Mm. And then when they see that, oh, okay, I can actually run a tech company. Oh, okay, I don't have to be just a nurse. I can be a woman in tech even though I'm a nurse. It doesn't matter. My knowledge is needed in the tech, you know? Mm. So for me, that's why it's important because we have got to be writing our own narratives. Yeah. And I love what you say about, you know, self the false narrative that have been created for the media and the marketing and, and being me in the marketing space are playing a big role in terms of how we talk about black people. Correct. And, you know, you know, people are surprised that, how on earth did you find so many women? They say, they were there. You couldn't see them. And trust me, there's so many more that are coming to me and there's so many more I want people to hear those stories. And that's why sometimes doing, taking such initiatives has to come from us because who can tell our story better than us? Who can sell, understand how to sell to us better than us? So think about tech entrepreneurs who probably don't understand the importance of diversity. What would you like to tell them when you think about black women in technology? I think that we need to come forward. So I like what you've just said, that we need to be visible. It's not that we are doing, but I think we are not showing up at the table. We need to show up, we need to be visible. And we need to know that we belong. So we don't need to be hiding, you know? We have to be present. Like you're saying, you were looking, people were surprised that 50 women, where did they come from? Mm. But if nobody came out to look for the women, nobody was gonna, they were nowhere to be found. So we need to be visible on the social platforms, representing what we believe from our hearts, and then pushing those messages through our platforms, you know? And as we do that, we amplify the voice, yes. we will be heard, we will have a place at the table when there is an event or a, or a workshop happening or when policies are being drawn, they will know that there is Fungai a tech entrepreneur. Can we listen to her? Can we call it and ask her? Yes. You know, but if I'm not visible, how are they gonna know? Absolutely. So we need to be visible. I love what you say. <laughs> so this is amazing what you say. And I have one last question for you. When you think about your legacy, how do you want to be remembered? Right. My dream, if the world was equal, I want to build and run an academy based in Africa that is specific for entrepreneurs, giving them an opportunity to change and transform the world with their ideas. I want to be remembered as somebody who only did not come to England and ended up just a number. Mm. I am going to leave an impactful legacy which is going to change the next generation. Love it. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>